pencil ready to go. And Ms. Neville's going to share her screen. In your notes, please write the fungus among us. The fungi kingdom, what is a fungus? Please take some time to write this in your notes now. When we're talking about fungus, it's important for us to know that there are everyday fungi around us. Okay, I want to make sure you know that fungi is plural, fungus is singular. So if I'm just talking about one organism, I'm talking about a fungus. If I'm talking about many organisms, I mean fungi. Okay, so let's get to work. When we're talking about a fungus, it's important for us to know that a fungus is a decomposer. A fungus is a decomposer. So with a decomposer, as we're learning about fungi, it's important for us to understand that a decomposer eats or breaks down dead plants and animals. Okay. And in a minute, we're going to draw some examples of fungi. my green out. I have my black. So let's look at some examples of fungi. And this weekend, um, next week, while you're taking your pass test, some of the research that you're going to be doing is pictures, finding pictures of actual fungi. So some examples of fungi that we need to know about. One of the most common ones is bread mold. That mold that we see growing on our bread. That is a fungus. That is a fungus. And you'll notice that we know that mold is growing and developing because it'll spread and take up that entire piece of bread. Okay. Some other examples. Be sure you're drawing these pictures with Ms. Neville. Or mushrooms. And today you're going to watch a video when the live session concludes about something called lichen. And you're going to learn about it today. OK. So fungi play an, a, um, an important role in our or in our ecosystem that we live in. Once things die, Fungi grow on those dead things, break them down, and turn them back into soil and, and things to help grow plants. So the food web starts all over again. In fifth grade science, you were supposed to learn about that, okay? But if you did, that's okay. We're going to be focusing on how the fungi are so important here. So our next question here is going to be, quite naturally, why? Are fungi so important? Okay. 
why are fungi so important? Sorry, y'all. And so it's important for us to know that um, when we're talking about fungi, it's important that we know that they help, quite naturally, they help to keep our earth clean. And they, they do this by breaking down dead plants and animals that can now be used for new things. Okay, so for example, dead animals can be broken down into soil. And dead plants too. Okay. I'll move that up for you so you can see it. Our next question that we're going to answer here today about fungi is how do fungi obtain resources. How do fungi obtain resources? And can someone unmute themselves and tell me what do I mean by obtain resources? Hopefully you said how they eat. That's what it means by obtaining resources. And so to answer that question, we're going to be drawing a picture again that helps to explain that. Okay. Remember, this lesson is being recorded. So if Ms. Neville goes too fast for you at all, um, you will be able to see this lesson later on as soon as this live session concludes. Okay. Move that up. So to answer that question, we need to actually draw a picture of one of the most common fungi, the mushroom. And let's draw a picture of our mushroom. It doesn't have to be a huge picture. And we're gonna draw this mushroom in the ground. And notice how I'm drawing its roots differently than I would draw plants roots. Technically, these aren't even roots. Okay, they're called hyphae, and we're going to learn why they're so much more important than why they're so important to the fungi's survival. So go ahead and take some time to draw this picture. We're going to label it together in this in a second. Okay. So when we're looking here, we see a mushroom, and this is a fungus. 
There are different parts of this mushroom that we need to know about. The cap. The cap is used for protection. On the underside of the cap, if you can remember a mushroom, you're gonna look at some pictures of them today, are the gills. The gills are used for reproduction. We have our stem here. Our stem is used to keep the plant stay or to keep the fungus stable and to transport nutrients. We want to remember that that word transport means carry. So it's going to carry nutrients from this part of the plant to the rest of the plant. And we would think of these as roots. They look like roots, they grow underground, but they are very important. They are called hyphae. H-Y-P-H-A-E. Hyphae are super important and they're not roots because they have a huge job. Hyphae not only absorb nutrients from the dead thing that the mushroom is growing on, but it also helps to break it down. So the hyphae is used to obtain resources. And let's dig a little bit deeper into the hyphae. With our next question, what is the role or job of the hyphae? So when we look at that hyphae structure, it's important for us to know it's underground. Remember when Miss Neville uses that word structure, I'm talking about body part. It's a body part. So this underground structure, first of all, it oozes a juice. That's the best way to say it, y'all. It oozes a substance that breaks down the animal or plant is growing on host. Then it's going to absorb the animal plant, which is known as the host. And we'll look more into that word, the host, in a second. My handwriting gets a little bit wonky, y'all. So that's H-O-S-T. So you see Ms. Neville use that word host twice. Okay, that host is going to be our last picture for today. That host is going to be that thing that the mushroom is growing on, that the fungus is growing on. So in this case, we have a dead log here or a dead tree. Okay. And from that tree, we're going to have, you've probably seen this before, Lots and lots of little mushrooms. Growing in that log. What you'll find here is the mushroom. This is the fungus. And the fungus is that decomposer.
the dead tree or log, this is our host. This is what um, the fungus is going to get its nutrients from. Okay. Give you a little bit of time to finish drawing that picture. And our last question that we're going to actually answer today, and this session is a little bit longer because our session yesterday was cut short. So this session probably will go into 848 today. Okay. Our last question that we'll work to answer today is how does the fungus reproduce? Well, to answer that question, it depends on the fungus, okay? Some fungi can reproduce sexually, and some fungi can reproduce asexually. Remember, sexual reproduction is when it's a male and a female. Asexual reproduction is when it's only one, okay? And in this case, it's going to be the mother plant. And so we're going to focus our attention on how the fungus reproduces asexually. So there are two ways that the fungus reproduces asexually. Very good. So Asexual reproduction here is going to be, it can either be through budding. What this means is, if I have one mushroom here, depending on the type of mushroom there is, and I told a few of guys, you do have some more pictures to draw today. You might have it where those hyphae start to grow underground, and they're going to pop up in a new place with a new baby mushroom. Notice how this only took one parent. This took one parent, okay? So this is our parent. And can someone unmute themselves and tell me what's another word for children? Starts with an O. Offspring. Offspring. Offspring, very good. And these are our offspring. So budding is one way this can happen. Another way that a plant can reproduce asexually is through spore release. And this is where that mushroom cap and gills, those gills come into play. Well, you want to remember that when we have our mushroom cap, remember in our original picture, we had those gills there, the underside of that mushroom. In those gills, we have spores. Spores are little bitty tiny seeds, okay? Little bitty tiny seeds. And when those spores, we can draw some of them here. When those spores are released by wind, wind will carry those spores 
to a different place. And that spore will start to sprout to make a new plant. Okay, so when blows spores from the gills of that mushroom cat, and those gills will rest, oh, I'm sorry, not the gills, those spores will land in a new place where an offspring, where's Ms. Neville's spelling going through today? Will take root. Okay, well, those are spores. Wind. I'll move my hand in a second, guys. Can't see that. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about what you'll be completing today, what you'll need to be working on today, including an extra credit opportunity. So you'll need to listen up. 